Hello and welcome to another episode of the Take a Full Podcast. Andy Cummins and Declan Carroll back again. Happy New Year to all our listeners and Happy New Year to you, Dec. How are you? Oh, Happy New Year. Yeah, it was a hectic Christmas period. But we, we done all right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll we'll get back into our Christmas review on the, on the next episode, yeah. which you guys will have coming back to back. But um, yeah, a fun and profitable Christmas, and it's great to see the episode with Philip Rothwell going down so well as well. Uh, yeah, appreciate that. Um, well, it doesn't stop here in terms of having uh, trainers on. Um, we're we're joined tonight by another special guest, Dick. We, uh, that you've this gotten is a top favorite, isn't it? <laughs> this is a top favorite. Yeah, one of your favorite trainers, Dick. Uh, a man the most mentioned man on Take a Pull. <laughs> <laughs> could well be. Um, a man who's having a fine season. Uh, nine winners to date this season. Um, has experience with jumpers. Uh, trains flat horses. Uh, gets into his pre uh, pre training. Um, helps with breezers, breaking in horses at the sales. He's a, basically a jack of all trades, a uh, fantastic horseman himself, and it is Owen McCarthy. Welcome to the Take a Pull podcast. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks for having me on, lads. It's a pleasure. No, I no, like appreciate you taking your time as well. As I listed all the stuff that you get up to in the industry, uh, Owen, if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, about um, your family operation and, and what you're doing in the game. Yeah, well, I suppose formerly when I was younger, I wanted to be a jockey and I tipped away for a while. Um, the recession in that got kind of quiet and I, I always had a big love for, we'll say, buying and breaking young horses and I kind of got more and more into it during the recession and kind of snowballed from there then. Um, really enjoyed the training inside of it. Um, seeing young horses progress is nice. Um, I suppose we've kind of got so busy with the race and you know it with the. Uh, the breaking and that's kind of half taking a back seat Gary Newland does a lot of the breaking from you know um, mm. no it's been great stressful but great <laughs> um, if it's not stressful you're probably not doing it right that's probably the way yeah. it goes it, it's there, especially in this industry it's always turning um yeah so I know you're having a, a nice season on um the, how, how do you think it's gone for yourself and what, what are your plans for going forward statistically we're actually, we'll say, our strike rates are up. We're kind of mm. ahead of ourselves on winners. But from where I am, it's been a frustrating season. We don't seem to be getting a rub of the green. Nice horses got needles or problems. So we should be doing a lot better, in my own opinion, than what we are doing. Um, now we're putting a big emphasis on up in the quality. We bought a lot of stores last summer. Really mm. happy with them now. They were all away to grass for the first time before Christmas. I think we have a real few smart horses in us and uh, that's probably the road we're going to continue to, is to try up the quality more than the quantity around the yard. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and and Deck, I know you, you've taken an eye on a, on a couple of horses in the yard that, that you've uh, that have really taken your eye and, and obviously that's a testament to the type of horse that you're buying on. Yeah, I, I, Big D and Fast Felix, I think they're owned by the same people, are they? Yeah, no, look, Big D is a proper horse. Yeah, uh, he ran. Mm. He ran way too keen and left us down for that kind of ground. Yeah. He's going to have a mid-season break, but like, whatever he's going to do this year, like he's going to be a lot better next year. Like he jumps real well. He's still only a frame of a horse, but but he has a huge engine. Mm. Mm. Um, fast feel it. He's probably not a bumper horse, even though he's been placed in three or four bumpers. Even at home, when he walks over hurdles, he's a different horse. Like, and I think he's first running a maiden hurdle, like. By far his best run. He um, yeah. he's gone on a little break now after he ran the other day, and he will be back all going well for Clarny and May. Oh, nice fantastic! You might bump into your lad, Deck. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it's funny we we bumped into one of Owens before in Clarny. Uh, Shannon Gray. Is she oh, yeah. lovely tough on his Billy. Yeah, we we were toured that day. For uh, we were we were happy enough with the with the place money that day. <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh, if you want, I know. You, or is she, sorry, is she no, no, go ahead, Doc, Sorry. Oh, she's gone in full. Lad, Mark Quaid, that on her, it would be he'd be big into breeding. No, so not. once we got the win under her belt, the next yeah. thing was she was going to go in full the following season. No, 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 yeah, she toughed it out well that day. All right, just real honest, real, real yeah. honest, really. So she nice. was fantastic. Um, you were mentioning about a few of your store horses there. Uh, Owen, how competitive is it now at the at the sales these days? I know the stores. It it, it depends what way you kind of look at. It. I know the, the the last round of sales was 
there was a few well, that and others didn't. I, I suppose, look, from my point of view, I don't have to buy the fashionable sires because I'm not really buying them to sell them on. I'm buying them to be race horses. Mm. So, like, if you're going to the sales, like, to find a fine price, they have to buy the sire that they can sell on, which is a really competitive market. Whether we are able to buy race horses, buy not the most fashionable sires, but like Mount Nelson, for example, was out of fashion at the sales, but he's mm. getting winners every day of the week. And like, mm. that's all the counts. If he's getting winners, we bought two lovely Mount Nelsons. We think one is a really, really nice horse. Um, bought two Califays. Just, we were at to buy these for small money because the tires weren't fashionable. Now, if they were the same individual and buy Blue Brazil, they were 30 grand horse. Yeah. Mm. You know, real athletic, nice horses. Just the tires weren't fashionable at the time. And there's value to be got if you go that way about it. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, and I know you were mentioning uh, Big D as well, uh, Owen, and obviously you said he's a very nice horse. Um, I think that you had another horse in a in a bumper there recently. I think it was at, at Down Royal. The name has just escaped me, Deck. I think you, you liked it, but he had her. That, that was Fast Felix. Felix. Yeah, it was Fast yeah, Felix. Yeah. Sorry, I was getting him. He was um, second to yeah. down memory lane in, in mm. the hurdle, wasn't he? Yeah. He's, he, yeah. He prob- he's probably not a real bumper horse. Yeah. Mm. You know, even at home, when we, when we say we work over hurdles, it just seems to light him up. I, I think he's going to be a lot better over hurdles. But it was just a testament, I suppose, to the horse. So genuinely is that he was placed in a few bumpers. Mm, Probably yeah. a fraction, maybe unlucky in Listol. He bumped into a horse. I know that Patrick Mullins taught a nice bit of. Mm. Um, but no, he'd go hurdle. And I'd say Clarny next summer now will be right up his street. Fantastic. Uh, the, the reason I wanted to, to bring up Fast Felix there, um, he, he's behind down memory lane, obviously you said in a maiden hurdle, but it's something that you cannot do in the UK. And I, I'd always wanted to get a trainer's opinion on it because I always love a horse that gets a bit of hurdles experience, doesn't win, but then comes back into a bumper. Is that something that you think would give a horse a bit of experience, like a bit of an edge in a bumper or is it, or it was just definitely. the way they kind of played out? No, it's definitely like they had the experience of two. You know, you could you can run twice or over hurdles and drop back. It's mm. um, I think it's a great job. Um, I know a few years ago you could run any amount of times you want and drop back the bumper. And there was lads handicapping horses and then dropping back and winning the bumper with a horse rate of eighty. But, uh, <laughs> that that's gone. Mm. Fair enough. <laughs> That's actually brilliant. That that thing that stuff like that could happen. Um, and a, another thing on about the yard, um, a, a great a, a personal achievement, possibly uh, just showing a testament to your staff winning at the the stable staff awards, winning a, a prize for the best turned out league. Um, you can you want to talk a little bit about that? And yeah, you know, well, it shows the care that your horses kind of it's um, held in. Is there a second year? In a, is there a second year in a row winning it? Um, mm, it Connection. We we lost on there, we. Second year in a row winning the the BCO the best turned out league, but um, I can't take any credit for it. I can't plant horses, but the the girls are very very good. They're top class at their job of turning them out at the races. But even from that alone, the lads around the yard, like, all the horses are brushed every day. They're they're minded. They're you know, I, I can't say enough about staff. I like, top class staff, and they all get on well together and. It works really smooth. That's fantastic. It's, it's brilliant. Obviously, obviously, it's a testament to, to your team and, and your staff. On, um, obviously, uh, anyone that is listening, uh, McCarthy Racing One uh, at dot com would be uh, on site. You can see what the team do on a day to day basis. There, get a bit of a lowdown um, on what he does um, and the services that he does provide. But um, oh, and if you had a, a horse, maybe t- that. You know, our listeners could maybe follow in the future. If, if, if I'm not going to put you on the spot now, but I know we've mentioned uh, Fast Felix, Big D, etc. Was there any horses that um that you might want to highlight yourself? A nice money spinner for the summer. There's a an unnamed three year old by Box Boom. We think he's a proper horse. He'd be one to keep an eye out for in a bumper. He's he's a proper horse. Bucks boom three year old. There we go. So yeah. we will keep an eye on on that. That's fantastic. Uh, is he for sale alone or is he going to be no, staying in the yard? He's one of the stores we bought last year, but there's um, a really good syndicate in Clarny after buying him. Um, so t- he could turn up in Clarny in May, but I'd be hoping he'd be out before then. But he was very, very good in Drummahan, and, and I hope 
I hope he continues and he's lucky for him. They're a great bunch. Oh, that, that, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, Declan, is there anything else you want to add? Um, not of Killarney. Would that be your, your favourite track on? Obviously, you've mentioned it a few times and, and we bumped into you there. Is that where you, you like to run horses there? Or, like, it's a beautiful place. Um, I think, I think Clarny's a track that owners like. Owners like going there yeah. and staying, you know, it's, it's a real kind of, there's a great atmosphere there always. Um, we, we've we had a lot of luck there. Now that I said, we, we've had a lot of, a lot of bad days there too, like. But I suppose that goes with the, with the, the nature of the game. Um, but I suppose if there's, it's local to us, we have a lot of local owners. And like I said, it's just a track that people like to have runners in. And it's yeah. important to get results in those tracks. Yeah, no, look, it's it's yeah, it's, it's a tough drive from Dublin. Um, like it's it's a long, long way. But the train, you, you'd walk from the train station, you know, if the times are right. And we've obviously been down there a few times now. It's like there, there isn't a setting in the world like it. No, no, it's very it's it's, it's very picturesque down there. Um, yeah. The whole thing goes in, but it's even the atmosphere. Like there's always a great atmosphere at that race course. Brilliant, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, we, we we have a lot of local owners, so we try to run a lot of horses local, Listol, Clarny, Limerick, Mallow, but like that, have two box, we'll travel anywhere we need to go, like we'll travel yeah. down the aisle if we have to, we're looking at maybe taking a trip or two to England later on in the springtime, um, no, we'll go wherever we have to, to get winners. Yeah, are, are the owners of Big Day and Fast Felix from up north? Or yeah, they're they from uh, Nuri. Sean and ah, that, that's why they've they've both gone up there, obviously. Well, yeah, well, they love traveling away too. Like they love Clarny. Um, yeah, they've had a lot of luck in Clarny and the stall. But like that, they're huge supporters of mine, and and I'd be lost without them, really. Yeah, mm. yeah. But yeah, obviously, well, buy nice horses anyway. Yeah, and, and you know, like they were brave enough when when uh, Big D won. Like obviously, the offers came for him, like, but they were brave mm. enough to say. We've been looking for a good horse, and we're we're going to keep him. Brilliant. No, which, yeah, brilliant. which is a big call, like. And, yeah, and you can't buy that experience. No, and it's absolutely massive. You know, from my yard, like I, I don't yeah. want to become a selling yard. I, I want to train good horses. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I I want to be competitive. I want to train nice horses, and thankfully, like we were able to hold on to him. It was a big thing. Yeah, That's yeah. happy days. No, that that is absolutely fantastic, and it is um. Yeah, with a bit of luck now, they they've got their experience and, and they kick on. And you know, obviously, the effort that you put in it goes without saying. Like even just studying you and, and finding out like the amount of things that you do in the background. Um, no, go without saying that you deserve the success that comes your way. Um, just some t- uh, you've won declaration. I see the weekend. Oh, and uh, Mississippi and the uh, Easy Fix Handicap Hurdle at Cork. Um, how's her well or how's her well being and is um she, she's a she's a lovely filly. She's owned by John Costello up in Galway. Um, great, real nice fella. She's been very lucky. She's won four races, but like this is her time of year. The more unraceable the ground, she loves it. Hmm. Um, things didn't go our way in Limerick. A little bit disappointed with how she ran, but things didn't go our way. But we expect her to bounce back and run a big race now on Saturday. Fantastic. And then you've uh, oh sorry, that one. No, 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 I was just saying nice oh. one, yeah, yeah. Oh, very good. And then you've uh, one more entry. Will we see uh, Ma- Mahoey in no, on Thursday at Clomel, no? No, I was just <coughs> I was curious to see what uh, handicap mark she got. Um, All right, okay. She, she'll hold tough now for a bit nicer ground there later on. Her point of point last year, even though she won on heavy ground, her best runs point of point and wore on nice ground. She was actually mm. unlucky in Valley Cahan last year. She made a mistake at the third last she should have won a very competitive mayor's open she was only beaten half a lint if she hadn't made a mistake i think she would have won two or three lints comfortable so very good yeah. cool well, we'll keep an eye out for her in the summer probably at clarney awesome um yeah well that's uh, that's absolutely fantastic i really appreciate it um, but there's just one we did get a couple of questions in i'll just ask one of them go ahead thank you I won't ask the other one. Um, someone was asking when is Streetscape dropping back to a mile at the dock? Obviously, one in the tracker. Yeah, um, Streetscape is actually going on a small break. He's going to come back for the turf later on in the summer. We think he'll be better on turf. Nice. Um, we'll see about Tripton. 
<laughs> cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, oh, no, I don't really want to take much more of your time here this evening, but I really do appreciate um, you coming on and sharing uh, a little bits about your yard and, and the horses in it. Um, very, very much appreciated. As you said, if anybody wants to go see uh, Owen's website, um, it's it's there for everyone to see. We'll post a link as well, maybe under the YouTube um, video as well, uh, McCarthyRacing.com. Um, yeah, but that's absolutely fantastic, Owen. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, it's a pleasure, Dad. Any time at all, give me a ring. Right. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you, Owen. Thanks, Dad. Well, and a big thanks to Owen McCarthy for joining us there, um, talking plenty about his yard and hopefully um, his decent season. Uh, gets even more decent as we get come into the spring months, and uh, and we see we see him at Killarney. <laughs> so that's it. You seem to be a big fan of that track, day. We'd, we'd be bumping into him at Killarney again. Yeah, I'm so, yeah. Owen McCarthy came down around too. Um, <laughs> we'll move on anyway to Saturday deck. Uh, without further ado, into Cork, uh, competitive seven race card, um, that we have down and and obviously according to, to Owen that you, you should be going ahead as well which is brilliant as obviously the weather's been bad down there but it's the happy new year from all a Cork Maiden Hurdle to kick us off at 12 minutes past 12 uh, 22 runners declared over two miles um, interesting to see a couple of four-year-olds in here as well uh, yeah. Roberti who was uh, behind the grade two winner uh, of Gordon Elliott's um, Cala Conti on his race course debut and um, this is going to be a third run in pretty quick succession to get handicapped, you would have thought. Um, and then we obviously have the art, the art as well, who I thought deck showed that he had quite a big engine when seventh on his hurdling debut. He just did not jump particularly well. Um, where do you want to start here? I would I would have thought maybe the favourite is going to be Liz Doyle's horse, uh, Will Wild, who was a good third in that maiden, I believe, yeah. at, um, at Nace, 10 lengths behind Quay de Bourbon. Um, decent enough bumper form. Uh, at Sligo as well so do you think he's got to be the one to beat Deck or do you think there's anything else in here that could no, cause him a fright yeah. no, I definitely think Will Wood's going to be the one to beat um, he also ran in a, a hot punches town festival bumper the one that Angelo Dundee, Dundee. Mm. We're, we're dying to see no, no sign of him yet um, and and then he, he won one at Sligo uh, toured on his hurdling debut beating 10 lengths I was a little bit disappointed with the art the art Maybe it was because we talked them up so much. Um, mm. it, it was a decent enough maiden. Um, and I'm just not sure about the art, the art, whether that's as good as he's going to be, or where we buying into the champion, the fact he ran the champion bumper too much, or mm. like we hadn't a lot to go on. We were hopeful. I was just a little bit disappointed. Um, but I think it's Will Wild is the one to beat. The other one I give a mention that is uh, Queen of Seduction. Uh, she was a two-time flat winner. She won off seventy-five, and she reached eighty-four. If she can jump, she could be. She could be a nice one. Um, I don't know what they're going to be doing with her. Whether she's, you know, where she's going to line up in this one, let's say. But mm. you know, I, I like these these mid-eighty flat horses when they can jump. They're, they're usually better than you know the the ones you hear about that are a hundred plus gone hurling. Um, yeah, you know, I always wonder. There's a lot more of those mid eighty horses that love it. They like it. You know, they they you really have to love jumping. And um, she's be one to be keeping an eye on. But yeah, it, I think Will Boyle is, is the one to be. Yeah, the one I was actually surprised to see in here was Liberated Light who, uh, for John and Thomas Coyle. Uh, John Gleason taking the five pounds off, and um, this is a full brother to a dream to share. Uh, funny enough. Um, having his fourth hurdle start, they must have been denied a handicap mark, um, and that's why they're running here. But the reason I thought um, it was an interesting entry is because he was extremely eye-catching at Cork the last day, um, and I think he's a handicap winner waiting to happen when when we do eventually see him in that sphere. But I would agree with you. Um, I think that the third from Will Wild on his hurdling debut was a really good run. I think that was a decent enough maiden, um, and I don't think he would actually really have to improve too much to win this. Um, obviously, Deck, as you said, Queen of Seduction uh, by Master Craftsman uh, out of a Manju mare should be, you know, should be capable of jumping. Um, just not sure about this deep winter ground for a flatbread. Uh, Pagan is probably also entitled to improve for Paul Townend and Willie Mullins, but uh, the form horse very much, I would agree, 
is um, is the Liz Doyle trained Will Wild, and that's who I'll be going for here as well. Um, moving on then to the second race, which is the twelve forty seven, the annual membership av- available rated novice hurdle. Uh, again, staying over two miles, just the seven runners. Uh, Doctor Brown Bear, who looks like he's had more stables than Bethlehem, and <laughs> at this stage, like he's, he looks like he's changed trainer again to to Eamon Courtney. Um, I did fancy him actually the last day, and and he was um, he, I don't think he could just quite the three miles looked like an experimental option, and maybe it just didn't work out because they're back to two miles here. So uh, very much a horse that the the drawing board is up for. Seven runners deck. Who do you fancy? Yeah, well, this one it's it's basically a handicap because pretty much positions. Mm. Yeah, one hundred and fifteen is eleven stone four, and it's a pound for every pound you're rated above that mm. so i i was struggling but the way i'm looking at this is it's and they're not races i normally get too heavily involved in you know because you don't always have handicap marks and they, they can be tricky to work out but starman won the last day uh but he's actually wrong here at the weight so he's to carry two pound more uh than he should than he would against the rest of them in a handicap mm. and the shantu king gave starman 10 pound the last day now they're off levels. Now I know the Shang Tu King, I think, may, might have been about 10 lengths behind, but I'd be expecting him to reverse the form. But other than that, I, I don't know. I'm kind of guessing, but that's the angle I'm going to take into this one anyway. Um, sometimes when I mean, you have to give a selection, it's just about finding any angle you can. So yeah, um, I think the Shang Tu King will reverse the form, um, and hopefully that's enough to win the race. <laughs> It's interesting, yeah. That that two pound it could prove, plot, uh, as you said, problematic for Starman. Um, some nice enough horses up the top. I'm not sure El Champo. Uh, obviously, Philip Rothwell having a fantastic season. He has kind of ran like the handicappers had him the last twice. Uh, Doctor Brown Bears, we said fact finding mission. Morning Soldier, plenty of experience. Um, looked like a very nice horse. Remember when he won at, at Dundalk? Um, all the way back him. As a, as a young horse but he just hasn't really got on um i suppose did run okay and um, like he he was he was just out of his ground the whole way at limerick and this is quite a quick turnaround and uh, the one i kind of came down on was actually the top weight uh flamborough i don't know if i'd be confident enough to be backing him Um, i think you're going to put up a better case now on deck basically he's down in class uh from that listed handicap at fairy house which is usually a good race uh, it was won by common practice I would forgive any horse for running in that race because if you remember, I think literally every horse had a, had a chance turning for home. They absolutely walked, and it was common practice to went and one. And I'd say more than half the field found trouble in running. Half the field basically had nowhere to go. Um, so the fact he was down the field that day, fourteenth, fifteenth, or something like that, it's probably because he'd have he was basically stuck in a maze. He'd nowhere to go. Um, he wouldn't have had a hard race there. He's down in class seven runners. Um ground slight question mark but he has one on soft at least um so he'd be my selection kind of again process of elimination i, I just think he could just be slightly better than this grade um so that's the reason i'd be taking flamebra there but um it wouldn't be necessarily the the most confident selection in the whole world um and then deck you're sticking with uh, the shantou king was it i'd stick with the shantou king yeah Probably. perfect well uh this one and uh, next race this one could take quite a while to complete <laughs> three miles on this sort of ground and it's a maiden hurdle like there there might be many finishers in this and um, we do have 11 runners this is extremely difficult uh oscar's brother who's tr- uh, th- uh, thrice placed in points um interesting enough runner uh but again starting over three miles in the in this sort of ground like it's very very difficult paul nolan in there with jasmine decott as well uh, Thomas Gibney, who's had a few nice horses this season, obviously the art art running uh, pre- uh, prior in the card, and yes, Butcher Hollow, but Kinter Kalanisi, um, he did make a, a nice enough start behind Blizzard of Oz. He could potentially be favour, uh, given the the type of um, given the type of race that he ran. Obviously, Largy Hill in there too. I wasn't uh, like he was behind stellar story i suppose like he's probably going to be the one that's that's long odds on here deck is he i was expecting him to be 
I was expecting Larry Hill to be favourite, yeah. Mm. Um, I'd, I'd say he could be a touch of odds on. He's bump a winner second to seller story, beating far mm. lens. But the one I think that could possibly um, give him a bit of trouble is, is Glenn Kiln, second to Quest with Speed before sixth in that hot, nice maiden, the one we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah, like that's that that's decent enough for him. But I just said the art, the art was seventh in that. He was, yeah. Yeah, like um, probably a couple of lads ahead of him, killing time. Yeah, don't know, three mile maiden. Oh, yeah, it's not the most. Would you have now from from any of them? Like you know, like <laughs> we want to. What what we be looking for handicaps? We looking for days to run in the farm mile handicap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's <laughs> looking for ones out the back of a three mile maiden running on past beaten horses up and yeah. the four miles. Most likely, Kinter Kalanisi did look like a dour stayer. Um, went fourth behind Blizzard of Oz. He ran actually a nice enough race, and it was. Um, I would imagine he's going to be fine on uh, on bad ground as he did show at Punchestown. I wonder what price he'd be to be placed in comparison to Largy Hill's likely very short odds. And I think I might back him each way because he, he showed me enough to suggest that, you know, he he has ability to win races. Um, and, you know, that's probably a lot more than, than a lot of the horses in here could probably probably say. So um, I'd be up Kil- Kinter Kalanisi each way. Uh, Deck, you'd be sticking with Glen, uh, Glen Kiln, yeah? Yeah, look, I think Largy, 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 oh, Largy Hill, um, mm. probably the, the most likely winner, but not really going to be, probably yeah. be a walker man's price. Like, if we were to have a bet, Glen Kiln, I think Glen Kiln is definitely running for a place anyway. Very good. Yeah, no, but there's three places available since there's 11 runners, uh, so maybe we'll, we'll, we'll fill the places there. Um, the easy fix handicap hurdle is next up 157. Uh, obviously, Owen was given his thoughts on Mississi, um, who he said loves this sort of ground. She was a little bit disappointing at Limerick, but um, they're hoping for a nice run. She's in here off 10 stone too, um, with five coming off her back as well, the jockey booking. So um, Cato's Revenge looking to obviously double up uh, in quick succession coming 10 days ago uh, was his win over hurdles. Uh, James O'Sullivan up. So he's probably going to be the one that they all have to beat because he was an easy enough winner despite being relatively easy to back all day in that race i, I um, think the handicapper got stuck in did he yeah and it gave him quite a wallop and up to 120 now uh but the horse obviously coming out in, uh quickly must be in good heart um yeah so pretty battered 11 pounds actually or sorry 12 pounds up to 121 so yeah quite the hit um and it's unsurprising given how easy he won um who do you fancy here deck um, do you know, what? I listened to Owen earlier. It'd be hard to put anyone off that horse now, and mm. it wasn't one that was. I, I obviously had a look, but uh, I, I it didn't really stand out to me, and I was kind of struggling here. Like, I, I can't really work the cap of glory out. Like, he, he's right 135, he's pulled up in the Galway hurdle of 138, but. I would be prepared to forgive that because if you you know you're struggling to get involved in the Galway hurdle and you're falling behind and torn on a lot at, at Galway, you know it might just not be your day. Mm. But then his previous handicap run before that, you know, was off this mark and he's beaten fifty lengths. So, but he's looked a nice enough horse outside of handicaps. Um, so I don't really know what to make of him, but I think that he might be his only two handicap runs. So it's you know I, I just don't know. I, I'm not I'm not going to be brave enough to forgive him two handicap runs off a man, mm. you know, in and around here. Uh, the two I was siding with is Abby Dale. Is it Abby? Yeah, Dale? Abby yeah. Dale for Gordon Elliott. Yeah. Yeah, Abby Dale. Look, he was a maiden winner in March. Um, his far lens fart on handicap debut off 123. You know, could improve for his handicap debut, even though he is a maiden, maiden winner. So he could go close. And uh, the Charles Bourne's horse, Evesham Road, maiden winner in May, um, was dropped out in two handicaps, was staying on over two miles, uh, probably a bit of an eye catcher, and then unseated the last day, but was dropped out again. I'd be interested to see, like maybe the horse needs to be dropped out, but 
if he's not, I, you know, if they were lining up and it didn't look like he was going to be dropped out, I'd be definitely having a bet. I do expect improvement anyway. Yeah, I'd have it. I, I had it between them until and Alan then came Alan threw a spanner in the way. <laughs> and you know, I, I think uh, you know it was similar when Philip was on as well, wasn't it? It was. Oh god, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Um, yeah, Abby Dale was the one that stuck out for me. He just looked like he was crying out for a step up and trip at Thurless when he was beaten with Packens Rock uh, after a break. Uh, go, clearly goes well on the ground. Uh, Gower and Maiden winner beating Raglan Road. Um, you could probably argue the handicapper didn't miss him off 124. Like on the balance of form, it's hmm. you know it's it's more than fair. Um, but given that the horse has just needed this step up and trip now, even going back to last year when he was actually running over this trip, but he did win his maiden hurdle over two miles, him finally coming back to this two and a half mile trip, uh, it's probably just what the doctor ordered. Uh, again, young horse goes on the ground and um, ticks all the boxes for me. And uh, yeah, be Abby Dale for me. I'm happy enough with that. Uh, Deck, would you be with Abby Dale or would you be with uh Evesham Road is it, as you said it probably depends how Evesham Road lines up is it yeah it would like look you were like Abbey Dale also so that mm. would probably if I remember between sway, the two yeah. that, that would sway me but if Evesham Road was lining up handy I, I'd definitely be getting on be, there mm, okay no fair yeah. enough makes and sense and you, you just want to hope there's still a price because now that year <laughs> yeah exactly yeah you'll know you won't you'll know where it's lining up as well <laughs> at about 11 a.m that morning and <laughs> um, yeah so <laughs> on, to, <laughs> on to the next and uh, we've got a keys bar and bistro for my and the stables bar carrig line uh beginners chase uh so this is for horses rated 102 or less over hurdles um beginners chase obviously um yeah no an interesting enough race uh jet setting johnny who had form i believe with um with abby dale uh, at gowan park he is uh, already a 113 rated chaser uh, but does get into this race because he was rated 102 over hurdle so it's a nice bit of placing by Almarie marie holden um, I, 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 was, um, I i i didn't understand this because because he was given mm -hmm. a rating of 108 over hurdles uh he's obviously just been dropped so he's right. given a he's given a rating of 108 was beaten 29 lengths and then pulled up uh handicap was dropped it back to 102. i would imagine the he was reassessed when he got an entry for this race possibly Maybe. um and he's been he's been allowed to run but a uh, nice bit of placing as i said by the trainer Maybe. uh noble blue who's closely enough um actually uh on the balance of form closely enough uh match with jets and johnny too um over hurdles and he's equipped to life okay over fences uh two decent enough runs um you could kind of go any way here though deck it's a, it's not an easy puzzle to solve these not 102s there's usually something lurking that's that could be very very well treated by the race conditions um who do you think that might be deck i had it between those two um mm. but I, I am struggling um like jess and johnny was toward the hensea at clamel um and ask anything was second and just jet Jess and johnny wasn't that far behind and, and ask anything has come out on one since um and yeah. it was the rating of 108 that really drew me attention to him because you know they, they're all rated below that of a hurdle so um mm. but then noble blue he was 18 lengths ahead of uh jet set and johnny at Gowron, but then he was way below that the next time so i don't really know what to make of the form but I have it between them. I just don't know which way to go. Like the the, the run after um, Gowron was was poor from Noble Blue, so I don't know whether there was any reason for that or. Hmm. I, I, um, I don't know. I'm struggling. I can make, I say you could make a case for both of them. Like it's it's hard to really make the case that Noble Blue was eighteen lengths better than. Have they both ran really poor? Uh, obviously. Jet Set and Johnny run really poor at Gowron and, and Noble Blue the next time. Um, it, it's something I'm just really, really struggling. I wouldn't be brave enough to back either of them. Yeah. You know, Fair enough. You have it between them. I do think both of them have the ability to win the race. I just don't know which one it's going to be. And, you know, they, they've both thrown in stinkers, I think. 
Yeah, well, one horse that won well over Christmas that is in this field, uh, Amora Bridge. Uh, she won one of these maiden hurdles, a very similar race conditions. I think it was for horses that had never been placed uh, under rules. Um, it was only eight days ago at Limerick, but she won very easily. She was a 50 to one job, uh, kind of won, you know, almost with her head in her chest. She was asked a few questions, but she picked up and was much the best. It was a seven length win. Um, a lot of point to point experience. Um, and they're going straight over fences with her, which I think is quite interesting, uh, given her background. Again, these races are competitive, but these horses all do seem to have a certain amount of ability. And, and when you see horses running in these races that have a lot of point-to-point -point experience and manage to win over hurdles, but they, they give up a season over hurdles. And what I mean by that is instead of winning your maiden hurdle and maybe going for a handicap, they just go straight over fences. It usually means that's exactly what the horse wants and needs. Uh, so they've got a bonus win in terms of going you know, to Limerick at, with a 50 to 1 chance of winning a maiden hurdle, which is brilliant, especially if it's a mare. Um, they're going straight over fences here. Simon Torrens is up. Um, I think that she might be slightly disrespected uh, given her connections. It was a monumental career best um even if you include her point form but she might just be progressing now um and up to two miles four uh she gets her fences i think she, i'd give her a little chance i i just thought limerick the 29th of december that was the worry yeah that um, is a worry was just mm. the fluke was it um and that was what steered me away from that but then mm. i'm talking about two horses and i don't know which is better than <laughs> yeah <laughs> usually I, you avoid the form if that's the way to go but that's the yeah. gee i'm going to take a chance now as i think uh the, the the market will you know will, will give you a nice price um so that would be my selection are you going to go for that in their deck are you uh, look, not really i i, I kind of have a between jet set and johnny and Noble blue but i don't have i don't have a strong enough opinion mm. to advise anyone to have a bet on any of them fair enough uh, the easy fix handicap chase at 307 is next over two and a half miles uh, again only the six runners so it, it's a small enough field and um, we'll obviously take plenty of getting uh reveling pleasure who's obviously now 12 uh, he was a winner of a veterans chase at limerick um fairly easily but it wasn't the most competitive affair in the world and um, and this mark might now eventually find him out uh vinox is one i always like to I was look. He, he ran okay. I, I thought he might go okay when when he tipped so the flow, but he, he kind of t folded quite tamely. Um, this could be another type of process of elimination race deck. Um, who do you fancy here? Yeah, it, it was kind of the process of elimination. I landed on uh, Baldur's Gate of one hundred and eight. Um, he's a lightly enough race. Uh, nine-year-old but looks on an upward curve one off 98 in november and then tore that limerick off 106 up another two pound i think think the horse could find it um another one who has a chance of reveling pre ple pleasure a 12 year old but like really really like well always in good form still in good form won the last day but you know i like reveling pleasure pre reveling pleasure was probably rated nearly 130 yeah at one at stage. Pump, yeah. yeah, but he is 12 now. Well, look, it was great seeing him winning the last day, but I, I do think he's probably going to run into a, a place here again. Have we got three places? No. No, okay. Look, he's not going to be far away, but it would be Baldur's Gate, who's, you know, maybe only raced eight or nine times, um, even though he's a nine-year-old, definitely on an upward curve at the moment. Okay. Uh, it's nearly the Liz Doyle show for me. So it's the second horse I'm going to tip. Uh, Old Soul, who I think, look, he was a little bit below par at Ferry House, but going back, um, he put in a good shift at Galway um, off 113. He, he is up a pound from that. Uh, the handicapper didn't drop him from Ferry House, which is a little bit unfortunate. But as I said, I don't think you're going to need a very well handicapped horse to win this race. Um he, he was just closed down late over that extended two miles six at Galway. Um, and he just couldn't get up that hill. You know, he was jumping well. Um, and, you know, Galway, you know yourself, Deck, long run in. It can catch a lot of horses out. Um, but even going back to uh, late last season, he was a winner beating Takarengo, surprise, surprise, um, at Clonmel in April over. Yeah, form at everything, as we said. Um, 
but he was in good form uh, from kind of December to April last year, which included a win over uh, over fences, beating Takarengo. Um, gets his ground here again. I think he might be at his best over that, this two and a half miles. I think that, that extended two miles six, and then the three miles at Ferry House just proved a little bit too much for him. Uh, back to two and a half miles here in a race that doesn't look like it's going to take the most amount of winning you're ever going to see. Um, he would be my uh, selection here. Uh, street value obviously up the top. Um, he just looked like the dourest of dour stairs and uh, he's probably going to find life tough coming back on my island trip. Um, and time to Rocco. Um, the handicapper seems to have her as well. So it'll be old soul for me and uh, Deck, you're with what, Baldur's Gate, is it? Baldur's Gate, yeah. Perfect. Uh, well, then on to the bumper to finish off this court card. Um, and this is a, a Mare's bumper, 342. Uh, 10 runners. I'm not even going to pretend to say that I have a fancy here. Uh, this is usually where I delegate to you, Deck, because I know how much you love Mare's bumpers. Um, <laughs> go on. Do you have anything you for the last? Or, 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 I, I, I'm a, a trailer all made in Hurdle Man these days. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I have no opinion in this race whatsoever. No worries. Let, well, what the tip yeah, is to Gavin watch it. Gavin has a runner. Kind of Hardy Spawn's riding. Well, yeah, usually Gavin's in the bumper. Uh, I know everyone yeah. says Willie's in the bumper, but Gavin only runs horses and bumpers, I think, can win bumpers. And yeah, cath Cathedral Rocks. A uh, fast net rock out of a Teofilio mare. She was not bred for this job. She was bred to go in the flat, but she's a five-year-old uh, going in a bumper and heavy ground of cork. Uh, she might have at least a little bit of speed to her. Um, given her flat pedigree so maybe she is one to keep an eye on in the last but that does bring us to the end of tap 19 um fantastic interview and again thank you very much to Owen mccarthy for joining us and giving up his time talking a little bit about his yard and hopefully uh his runner corco and um, millie c goes well and um, in the handicap hurdle um and hopefully a few of our selections win deck do we have a nap of the tap before we go i know we agreed on a couple of runners was there any that you're exceptionally strong on um I we there I, was I, I, Abby we, the further context was Abby Dale at one fifty seven for Gordon Elliott and Jack Kennedy, and yeah. then there was the um, the Liz Doyle horse in the maiden. Uh, yeah. We couldn't be we couldn't be napping a horse in the maiden, could we? No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, look, I, I don't know whether we have one. We I I'd say we have in nap at the tap at Nice on Sunday. Yeah, which we'll get there on the next tap, but. Mm. I look. Oh, if I was nice to give, mm. yeah, if I was to give my nap here, it would be maybe Baldur's Gate. But look, Baldur's Gate. I'm okay. not really strong on anything. I know we did both agree on on Abby Dale, but you know, I'm throwing a spanner into the box there. Like <laughs> we we can see dangers in that race, and and Charles Bourne's horse as well. If he's lining up handy, it'll be game over. So, um, I'd say. Baller's gate is probably my nap in what's you know seven runners one of the maybe one of the easier handicaps to win all season yeah handicap chase absolutely i'll stick with abby dale i'm happy to put my neck out on the line for abby dale so there's our two best bets of cork um yeah and that said uh, that brings us to an end of tap 19 thank you very much for listening uh always keep just keep liking keep subscribing retweeting liking everything all the good stuff um we'll keep doing this if you guys keep doing that so very much appreciate it um and until tap 20 which is uh probably going to be in on your devices uh, around the same time as tap 19 <laughs> that's uh <laughs> yeah exactly so uh you can a bit of back-to-back -back tap listening for you guys uh, this weekend but until then thank you very much yeah bye bye, cheers. Oh, bye, -bye.